Kogi, Delta, Edo, Rivers and Anambra states go experience heavy flooding like never before. Federal government don't approve draft on top Nigeria national quality policy. FCT administration don't set to bring back sanitation officers to check dirty environment. And INEC don't send national commissioners and recs for Kogi election. My country people, now good evening this evening and thank you. Say so you join us for As It Take Happen. My name is Na Nna Douglas. For the first story, we are carry on giving now. Nigeria don't accuse Cameroon sake of heavy flooding will been affect Adamawa, Taraba, and Benue states, plus including the rising water level inside Lokoja, the Kogi state capital. On top one media briefing inside Abuja today will be Monday. Director General of the Nigerian Hydrological Survey Services will be Engineer Clement Nze. Con the express concern, the worry, say Cameroon authorities been released water from the Lagdo Dam without giving any notice to Nigeria. And they talk, say, this one day against the memorandum of understanding between the two countries, as especially when it concerns the release of plenty of water from their dam. Unfortunately for us, this year, we are downstream, we are the receiving end. They release water from the dam without uh, informing us. You will read the details of my correspondence with them. Text messages, but their own response is what I put there when I was under pressure. I was calling them, sending clips taken from our general officer in, in Yola, sending to them, see what it is not ordinary at this season of the year. Then they gave us a tacit response by saying the dam was opened on the tent and closed for the rainy season on the 31st of uh, October. The Director General, Nigerian Hydrological Survey Services, once say as the water they flow through River Benue down to River Niger, more communities inside Kogi State and people where they live for east and south will experience flooding where carry big, big rank, even as rain don't they reduce. He, specific, he specifically called Obonge government and people of Kogi, Edo, Delta, Rivers, and Anambra State say make them make sharp, sharp plans to carry everything where they get, move to higher ground as the water they find in way to the Atlantic. The that are vulnerable. So now that we are not yet out of the flooding season because of the current situation of release of water, you should arm them with more information to put more measures on ground to evacuate people to higher ground. And to the next story, as Nigeria joined the rest of the world to mark World Tsunami Awareness Day on Tuesday, co-founder Rethinking Cities, Deji Akinpelu, talks say Lagos fit no survive another tsunami disaster. Akinpelu tell Wazobia Max TV correspondent Joy Kalio, say Lagos state government don't they do plenty landfill where Oyibo they call reclamation why residents they build for wrong places and if they lose wetlands, we suppose protect the edge of the ocean from wave action and reduce the impacts of floods. If other talks say, people where they live for communities will get water, like around the Elaje area, don't they use waste, aka dirty, to fill their land in order to protect them from water, just as they add say, if serious flooding or anything of natural disaster affect those commu water communities, the disaster will go happen for Lagos, no be waiting, then they tell man. UN General Assembly been done set aside November 5 every year as World Tsunami Awareness Day. And for the next story, we're consigned FCT and still on the environment. Sake of the headache, especially how people of FCT, they throw away dirty any help loss, including their poor attitude to environmental sanitation. The Minister of State for FCT, Dr. Ramatu Aliu, don't swear say, the administration will bring back sanitation officers to help tackle this scan environmental wahala. The minister talked this one on Monday will be today when she they go round to check projects where the Federal Capital Territory Administration do for the six area councils we make up the FCT. Dr. Ramatu Aliu with a squeeze face sake, sake of how they abandoned the Kujay, Kujay Stadium project where they don't turn to where then they throw it dirty now. Talk say any moment from now, FCTA go introduce sanitation officers so that discipline among residents go be the order of the day. Wazobia Max TV correspondent John Emmanuel followed for the minister's entourage and sent in reports. 
The minister come follow the young say, Bele no sweeter at all, at all, over the way we then carry abandon so many projects we for benefit ordinary country people for we country. According by her, the one we pain her past now this Kuche Stadium, we contract to and government don't share it for over five years now. Even though room was not built in a day, when we are going around to make sure we inspect government abandoned projects, abandoned roads, or roads ongoing, to see how we we'll expedite action, especially that Mr. President said all ongoing projects or abandoned projects must be completed. Amen. For governance, it's a continuous process. We will go around to ensure that they are completed. We just saw the stadium in a, in a dilapidated state. I don't know. That is how you've been using it for all these years. We are working hard to bring to book and to stop the incessant attack and kidnapping by men of the underworld. No doubt, the, the diversification policy of the federal government and promotion of local only ensuring the abandoned projects are completed. We are desirous of more projects that will open up Kujie to investors and partners alike. On top of that one, now so they can turn the stadium into Bola. This one come make Dr. Ramatu Ali come they beg the people of Kujie. Say, I beg, I beg. They could not try, they keep the environment clean. I saw so many areas that I had to ask the uh, chairman area council uh, what to do about them. And we agreed on some steps to be taken. But when they are taken, and our sons and daughters are also the sanitation monitors of those areas, we shall hold you to account. We will revisit that Dubagari time. You remember Dubagari? Yes. Sanitation officers that go around to check our various houses. We will revisit it. We will be our environment keepers. By the time we come and there is filth somewhere, I will hold you to account. No be so. After the beg now, she can't follow open her mouth. Come the promise say this current administration go try everything possible to make sure say every project where they don't abandon before, say they go complete them before their tenure go expire. For inside this old bunker visit where this minister go do for Kujie today, the visit carrier go places like the Kujie Area Council Secretariat, Kujie Forest, Chibri Primary School, where she go commission one project where they don't study and other places for inside Kujie. This now. John Emmanuel for Wazubia Max TV. And for other news, the Senate Committee on Top Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters don't recommend the confirmation of Justice John Soho and Justice Benedict Kanyip as Chief Judge of the Federal High Court and President of the National Industrial Court, respectively. The Senator Obeyemi Bamidele led committee nine confirmed the two uh, justices after one secret screening exercise will happen inside the National Assembly building for Abuja. After the exercise, Senator Bamidele Konyan say no democracy feed grow with judiciary will no appeal. The recommendation by Mr. President uh, also must have been informed <coughs> by I mean, your antecedents and the kind of reputation that precedes you. It is part of our own understanding that the MOOC, both in the executive and legislative arm of the government as well as in the judicial arm, should allow the Supreme Court appoint the required number of justices as provided for in our constitution, which is 21 altogether, with a view to helping the Supreme Court to be able to also take care of many of the cases that have been pending. Same for appointment of additional justices of the Court of Appeal. But we know all of these have financial implications. And these are not implications, these are not issues that can be addressed within the envelope given to the judiciary. And of course, the rest assured that we will do all we can to ensure that the legislative arm of government works with the executive arm of government, uh, not for our justices and judges, it's nothing personal to, to them, uh, but for our democracy to survive, because there's no alternative to what we are doing. The only alternative you know, is anarchy, and no one prays for that. So we will do what we have to do on our part. And I also just want to assure you of all our colleagues that I 
Nigerians have expectations from our justices and judges. He talks a good good make them set up special intervention fund to help judiciary make it work well well. Senator Bamidele can they encourage the justices say make them do their best to spearhead the, the improvement of welfare of judicial officers and make sure say the reforms what they need do then do and well. They expect the committee to submit their report before the Senate on Tuesday for inside plenary. And for the next one, we're consigned army to security matters. The Nigerian army talks say then go touch light bab plus including punish any soldier. Any soldier will not behave the professional way, like to do things like extrajudicial killing and badness will consign torture of suspects. The acting director, Army Public Relation, Relations, will be Connor Sagir Musa. Now announced this one for one talk paper when distributed to Tory people inside Abuja. Connor Musa talks, say, the decision, now sake of one video we done the trend, we show where army people, they torture and kill people where they suspect, say, they be Boko Haram inside the northeast of Nigeria. He adds, say, army authorities don't clearly and strongly condemn the action of the soldiers who are involved for that kind of behavior. And not be smarting, the acting director, Army Public Relations, talks, say, they go surely inform government of the result of the action when they take on top this matter. And uh, another story will resemble that one. Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukur Buratai, as it be, he don't announce, say, the production of the first set of mines resistant ambush protected vehicles, what they call MRAP, by the Nigerian Army, Army Command Engineering Depot inside Kaduna State, don't reach 80% completion. Lieutenant General Buratai now announced this one today will be Monday when they inspect work for the depot inside Riga Chukun for inside Kaduna State. He explains, say, the local production of combat vehicles with the nickname Ezugu Nrap now to add local content and technology to support Army operation. The name the name am Ezugu Nrap to use am honor Major General Victor Ezugu for an effort to reduce terrorists for support some area inside northeast of Nigeria. The chief of army staff, Constress, say, then produced the vehicle using 100% local engineers of the Nigerian army. He adds, say, the vehicles, they make them with more than 70% local content and with collabo with the Defense Industry Corporation of Nigeria, DECON. And now we don't enter politics. We just 11 days to the governorship election inside Kogi and Baeza states. Election joint body will be the Independent National Electoral Commission. Don't other say, make three of their commissioners relocate to Kogi state, Shapali. Their name now, Solomon Shoyebi, Mohamed Haruna, and retired Air Vice Marshal Ahmed Muazu. They also deploy seven resident electoral commissioners on top of this election, Waka. They announced this deployment to polit political correspondents on Monday by the head, Voter Education and Publicity Department inside Lokoja office of INEC, Ahmed Biambo. He talks, say, then draw the resident electoral commissioners from Kano, Bauchi, and Enugu states. Already, the three resident electoral commissioners, they for Lokoja now, they assist the resident electoral commissioner, Professor James Appam, to fine tune modalities for the November 16 governorship and Kogi West senatorial by election. But as it be, then they, then they expect other wrecks for inside Kogi State for the ninth of this month. And for the next story, we're concerned Ministry of Industry, Trade, Investment. And as it be now, Inside Abuja, federal government talks say then they're serious to see say the quality of services and goods within they produce inside Nigeria meet the same quality standard as inside Obodo Oyibo. The Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Otumba Adebayo, now here this one on Monday will be today inside Abuja on top of the validation workshop will consign Nigerian national quality policy. The minister will be saying at the deputy director of trade department for the Ministry of Trade and Investment, Abubakar Aliu, read the speech, explain, say, the, the new quality policy will improve the economy for inside Nigeria. I believe uh, this is an important policy which will take um, 
Nigeria into the next level in terms of trade. With uh, quality policy now, it's like an assurance that um, our, po our product and services meet the necessary quality uh, and standard that for them to penetrate uh, international markets. So I'm happy uh, we are validating a policy and hopefully the Federal Executive Council will approve the policy and we have a policy that uh, will take the Nigerian economy to the next level. For the opening yarns, the Director General of the Na Nigerian National Accreditation Service, Lesson Okanya, talks say the new draft quality policy will improve the value of goods and services and also help for quality projects inside the country. He adds the policy now to ensure adequate capacity and to swell the economy. The a straightforward document. We go hold manufacturers responsible, whole government responsible. All of us go do our own part so that anything we produce for this country go good. Policy is a straightforward oh, the document. news now as it take happen. And the TV, now Wazobia Max TV, with a comeback with business news. And on top business news, President Muhammad Buhari don't sign the Deep Offshore Act, we been, we then been done amend. When he they announced this one for one statement, the senior special assistant to the president on top uh, to the president on top media and publicity will be Garba Shehu. Nine talks say the signing ceremony being happen for London today will be Monday. According by him, according by the president, he described the signing as important day for all Nigerians, but particularly for the younger generation. And according by him, Nigeria will now receive their fair, rightful, and equitable share of income from our own natural resources for the first time since 2003. He talks say the sharp reduction for the cost of exploration, extraction, and maintenance of oil fields happened more than 25 years, at the same time as prices of sales don't go up. And our chief of staff to the president will be Abba Kari, nine witness the signing. And for the second one now, for the second time inside one week, Governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefele, don't fail to appear before the Senate Committee on Top Finance to explain the difference exchange rate on top of the prosecution of three major government projects. Make we hear him. Why did he ask me to represent him at this sitting? Where is the governor of Central Bank? He was here last week Friday. Where is he? I, I know he flew out of Abuja. He was actually, I believe, in Edo States around Friday, Saturday. I knew he flew out of Abuja. It was actually a phone call that I got when I'm here representing him. So there is no correspondence to that effect. Do you have a copy of the letter sent by this committee to Central Bank? No, I don't have a copy with me, but it was read to me, sir. Uh, how can you, on uh, the phone, where is the copy? Do you know the content? What's the content in that letter while we are here today? Mr. Chairman, sir, I'm aware of why we are here today. Like I said, it was read to me. And it relates to the transactions that we had with the sovereign investment agency. And this development no go down well with the Senator Solomon Olalemi Lekon led committee as he don't shift the meeting to Wednesday so that the CBN governor, governor will appear in front of the committee. CBN Deputy Governor Wede in charge of operations, Shonubi Fola Shodun, may appear before the committee. But Senator Olami Lekon insists a Emefele must appear in person to answer plenty questions with go Samaram on Wednesday. We have invited the Central Bank for the last one week. The information was enough, at least for the same, to go to the Governor of Central Bank and take adequate steps to ensure that he is present at this occasion. And secondly, there is no formal letter from the Governor of Central Bank giving us excuses as to why they will not be appearing before us today. Maybe if such letter has come, we would have asked. I accept the fact that yes, it can come by the way of process. I will reschedule the meeting. 
In the absence of all of this, I think it is only right and proper for us to turn down the idea of allowing the Deputy Governor to represent him by the way and manner in which he has arrived there today. So I want to say, sir, that the uh, majority of our colleagues have said the Deputy Governor of this meeting will be scheduled for another date and we will give a very little window for which the governor, the central bank, and his team will reappear before this committee alongside with the Nigeria Investment Sovereign Authority. Because we have had extensive discussion with the authority, they have been here before us more than three times, question bordering on the activities, question bordering on the involvement in the nation's economy, question bordering on the project in which they have embarked upon on behalf of the government, Western Bordering on the future of the Nigerian Sovereign Development Authority has been discussed extensively. And areas which we call the grey areas, which we have stumbled upon, has led us to the idea of inviting the Governor of Central Bank to appear before us and give further clarification as this simple item we are to dealt with affects the nation's projects and by extension the activities of government transaction on a day-to-day -day basis. I will say that uh, it's unfortunate that we have not found ourselves in this situation, but we cannot go ahead without the presence of the government of Central Bank. And uh, the, the secretaries have briefed me that we are only available on Wednesday. And Wednesday will be the date we are inviting the government of Central Bank to appear before the Committee on Finance alongside with the managing director on Nigeria Sovereign Investment Authority at exactly 2 p.m. The GSB say the committee, they touch light why the CBN exchange rate for money where they don't distribute now 325 Naira to $1 instead of the official rate of 305 Naira. My people, it remains sports news. Will they come back? And for Toriwe Consign Sports, uh, as it go take happen, the trophy for the FIFA Women World Cup, they expect say it go enter Nigeria on Thursday this week. When it announced this one for one statement, the Director of Communication, Nigeria Football Federation, Demola Olajiri, talks say the tour go kick start on Thursday. The FIFA Women's World Cup trophy go show face starting months after the men FIFA World Cup trophy enter Nigeria ahead of the world football game will go happen inside Russia. My people now the Tory be that, but before I go, make a summer on a waiting form our top Tory. Kogi, Delta, Edo, Rivers and Anambra states go experience heavy flooding like never before. Federal government don't approve draft on top Nigeria national quality policy. FCTA administration don't search to bring back sanitation officers to check dirty environment. And last last, INEC don't send national commissioners and recs for Kogi election where they come soon. My people now saw the news carry happen this night. Thank you say you the part of the news. My name is Na Douglas. Una good evening.